Mindfulness Mondays has been hosting for about four years. It was just the start of COVID. Um, and so we've we've really cultivated a, a beautiful community uh, centered around mindfulness and those of us who are impacted by Parkinson. So I'm just so grateful for the way that each of you continue to devote and commit to this practice and to this community. It, it's it's truly a, a beautiful honor and privilege to be able to hold and facilitate this space for us to continuously touch in um, into the sense of belonging and community. So thank you for being here. Our next live session will be on September 30th with a dear friend and Parkinson's ambassador, Barbara Leffler. She is here on screen if you wanna scroll through and, and see her. Barbara, you can share in the chat if you'd like to say hi to everyone. Um, she has a special session for us on September 30th. So you'll hear more from her next week, not next week, two weeks from now. <clears throat> Wonderful. So this week, uh, this week's Wellness Wednesday, it will be hosted on September 18th. Uh, we'll understand how rehabilitational professionals, including physical therapists, occupational therapists, speech language pathologists, and others work together to maximize functional abilities and quality of life for individuals with Parkinson's. Our speaker this week is Dr. Terry Ellis, which is really strange to hear because that's my last name. Just saying Dr. Ellis is kind of goofy uh, for me to, to share. She is an esteemed professional in the physio um, therapy world of Parkinson's disease, highly renowned in her field of research. So I strongly encourage you, if you have the time and space to join us live to do so. And if not, uh, just for your convenience and understanding that most of our PD Health at Home programs are recorded and they're posted on our Parkinson's Foundation's YouTube channel. So you can access um, that by going to the Parkinson's Foundation's YouTube channel or our website. Wonderful. Joining us this month is Nico, and Nico is in an exciting place. I'm sure he'll share a little bit more about it. Nico, thanks for being here. Yeah, I'm very grateful and happy to be here with all of you. So I was just thinking as, as Krista was introducing us, I was thinking about how I've been with you all almost since the beginning, that I've Devin my wife and I have been teaching Mindfulness Mondays for almost four years, and what a delight it has been to drop into this community about once a month for all of this time that has gone by, from COVID, coming out of COVID, all of the changes that have happened in our lives, all the changes that have happened in your lives. And as many of you know, uh, Devin and I are often in a different place when we call in. We are travelers. We are somewhat itinerant teachers. And right now, I am in Kauai, on the North Shore of Kauai. So it is very early in the morning for me, but the coffee is kicking in and I am ready. I am ready to be here with you. So today I want to talk about forgiveness. The fact is, whether we like it or not, we are sensitive beings. We come into the world with sensitive bodies, nervous systems, hearts. And whether we like it or not, we get hurt. And no matter how much we try, in one way or another, we hurt others. This is the human realm. At the same time, it can be hard to forgive and it can be hard to ask for forgiveness. And when we struggle to forgive or to ask for forgiveness, there's a hardening that happens in our own hearts. And when there's a hardening in our hearts, there can be a kind of hardening in our bodies. And so forgiveness is a kind of allowing, it's an acceptance. It's a softening into the way things are. Softening into the way things are now. Forgiveness is not forgetting. Forgiveness is not pretending that a wrong wasn't done. 
It's simply an acknowledging and a softening in a way that allows us to move forward. It's a kind of integration of the life that we're living. And we can talk about forgiveness in what are maybe three domains, three domains of forgiveness. This is how one of my teachers, Jack Cornfield, speaks about it. The three domains of forgiveness we could think about together, one is asking for forgiveness from others. That's the first domain, asking for forgiveness from others. Because no matter how hard we try, no matter how careful we are, we will step on other people's toes. We will cause perhaps unintentional harm. So this is the first domain of forgiveness is asking forgiveness of others. And we're going to do this in the meditation today, just internally. The second domain that we'll work with today is asking forgiveness of ourselves for all of the ways that we haven't treated ourselves well, things that we have done that have actually caused ourselves difficulty, harm, ways that maybe we've even betrayed our own values, who we wish to be. And it's useful to take a moment and offer forgiveness to ourselves. And then the third domain, extending forgiveness to others, offering forgiveness to those who have stepped on our toes, who have caused us harm. And now just to repeat, this doesn't mean that we pretend that there wasn't harm done. It doesn't mean that we just forget about it. It's a way of actually integrating the hurt that we've experienced in a way that can make us more resilient. It's a softening into strength. And this meditation is a, a way of inviting that softening into strength. And so in a moment, we'll do a meditation together where we move through these three domains. And I'll invite you in this meditation to choose mild themes. So when you are asking forgiveness from another, please don't call up the most difficult thing that you've ever done to another person. We're talking mild. This is a training. As you move through this training and you do it again and again and you get familiar with the meditation, you can go to more and more difficult situations. But for today, we're going, it's like lifting weights, right? We're just going to lift the three pound weights, the five pound weights, and we're going to save the 20 pound weights for next month when we get really trained. So as we're asking forgiveness for others, we're going to ask for a mild thing we've done. As we ask forgiveness of ourselves, again, a mild betrayal of ourselves. And as we ask forgiveness, uh, as we offer forgiveness to others, not the most painful, traumatic thing that has ever happened to us, but something just irritating that somebody has done, something mild. That is the word of the day, mild, okay? Good. So you could find yourself in a comfortable meditation posture. It doesn't have to be a particularly special posture, but something where you feel a little bit upright. Just so there's a sense of wakefulness and a, a mild, a, a warm alertness in the body, in the heart, the mind. And then you might allow your eyes to close or just gently soften your gaze. And we could take a couple of deeper breaths together.
Really feeling the breath move into the body, feeling the breath move out as you breathe deeply. And then when you've taken those deeper breaths, just allowing a natural rhythm of the breath and bringing a warm awareness, a kind attention to your heart. Sensing your heart. Almost like you're reading your heart. How is it now? And from this place of being a little bit connected with your own heart, call up something mildly difficult that you've done lately or in the past to another. You know your habits, your little ways of irritating people. Just the ordinary personality stuff that we've all got. Maybe call up a specific situation where things went a little out of balance for you and you did something you regret. Said something maybe that you regret. And then just in your own heart, in your own mind, you could ask for forgiveness. Please forgive me. We are all worthy of this charity. Please forgive me. And then you might imagine that it is forgivable and you are forgiven. 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 Now calling up a situation, maybe recent, where you've done something or said something that caused difficulty for yourself, something mild, falling off your diet or not getting the exercise or some way that you haven't fully cared for yourself and you feel a little guilty a little guilty. And you might just ask forgiveness of yourself, saying to yourself, please forgive me. Please forgive me. And then imagining this is forgivable. Of course, we're all worthy of forgiveness and it's forgiven. Forgiven.
And now you could call up an image of a situation that has happened recently or in the past where someone else did something or said something that hurt you, something mild, an irritation, maybe an unintentional slight. Of course, not choosing the most difficult thing. And then we could offer forgiveness. I forgive you. Because everybody is worthy of this forgiveness. Even if they've done something that's painful, forgiven. Forgiven. And now we'll sit for a minute or two in silence, just letting this resonate like a bell that's been struck. There's a kind of ring that happens when we practice together and we'll just feel that. Yeah, so now you might take a couple of deeper breaths. Let your body begin to rock. Let your body begin to move and stretch. Open your eyes. Okay, so a few words before we open up the chat for questions. Forgiveness is a process. And you might notice today as we did this meditation that there was one category, one domain where something did shift a little bit. There was a softening. And you might notice that there's another domain where it felt like it didn't really shift. There wasn't really a softening. Maybe you encountered numbness, maybe you encountered anger, and that's natural. That is a part of the process. And so whatever comes up as you're doing the practice is welcome. We're not trying to force forgiveness. Forgiveness is a kind of grace. It comes when it comes. And we can invite the grace by having an intention to forgive. And through the meditation, we're just bringing that intention again, again, very gently, no expectations and seeing what happens. And so as we do the meditation again, as we do the meditation again, if you wanna bring this into your own life, you'll notice that very gradually through a lot of peaks and valleys, ups and downs, little more forgiveness comes, little more forgiveness comes. But don't worry if it's not an immediate hit. For some people it is, and that's wonderful. For some people it's not, and that's wonderful. Some days it is, and that's wonderful. And some days it is not, that's okay. Even the days when it is not, you're planting the seeds of forgiveness. So let's open it up the chat for questions, comments. How did that go? First, let's go, let's start with that. 
How was that? Kieran is saying, it is very easy to forgive someone other than yourself. Yes. Some, for some of us, the hardest to forgive is myself, right? Hardest for, to, to forgive can be myself. There's a good one. Needing to forgive my body. Often people who have chronic health conditions feel I've been betrayed. I've been betrayed by my body somehow. And so you can do, we didn't do this specifically in this practice, but you can do the same practice as a forgiveness practice for your own body. Oh, my body, I forgive you, right? I forgive you. Always enjoy being guided through these exercises. Yeah, Babs, you've been coming for a long time. Uh, wonderful to have you here. Not as easy trying to do my own. Here, external direction helps me focus. Oh yeah, doing on your own, doing mindfulness on your own can be quite difficult, but getting some guidance can be very supportive for some of us. Yeah. I was going to say that we are often harder on ourselves. Isn't that true? We are often harder on ourselves. Did any questions come up as we were doing this? Any difficulties that you could use some pointers on? Any blocks? Yeah, thanks. I will use this again. Very helpful. <laughs> this session is not my cup of tea. How does this relate to Parkinson's? Excellent question. So how this relates to Parkinson's can be different ways. First is that when we, okay, I'm going to go with two avenues. First, many people who have a chronic health condition, as I just said, can feel the sense of disconnect from their body. They can feel the sense of disconnect from their experience. It may be that we offer forgiveness directly to our bodies, the sense of being betrayed by our body. It could also be that um, there can be a disconnect from our hearts, right? When we have a chronic health condition, there can be the sense of being somehow apart from or being separated from our own internal experience. And forgiveness is one of these beautiful practices that softens those boundaries. It just allows us to meet our experience as it is. So, the th and I'm, okay, a third one. Often for many of us, when there is stress in the system, when there's stress in the body, the heart, and the mind, some of the symptoms of Parkinson's can get a little bit amplified. And if we can work with the system, with the nervous system, with the heart, the body, the mind, to ease, to release extra stressors, some of the symptoms of Parkinson's can sometimes ease a little bit. So forgiveness practice, while it's not directly relating to Parkinson's all the time, it can be an internal process that kind of comes in from the back door to help relieve some of the symptoms that are associated with Parkinson's. Excellent question. Even a small success in forgiving is freeing. Excellent. Forgiving your body for having Parkinson's is hard to do. Yeah. And again, this can be a very intense practice. And so taking it slowly is very important. You know, you might turn your this forgiveness practice towards something easier for a while, right? Like it's maybe it's easy to forgive your pet for misbehaving and you start with that. Like my friend has a cat that he loves, but this cat really annoys him because it's always misbehaving. You can start on that level of training the heart to forgive something, somebody that you, it's very easy to deal with, you love them, but they're just so irritating like this cat. And then very gradually, you can get some more and more difficult feelings that you need to forgive. And maybe forgiving the body for having Parkinson's is a high level. You gradually make your way there until you have the sense of integration, until you have the sense of space where you can really address this. But it, it's hard to do for many people. I'm angry that I'm sick, exactly. 
I need to forgive myself for being sick. Yeah. And then someone's saying feelings aren't good or bad. They just are. And exa this is exactly right. So taking your time, angry, right? Acknowledging that sense of anger. I'm angry that I'm sick. I need to forgive myself. I need to forgive my body for being sick. A process. It's not going to happen all in one day. It's going to be like drops in a bucket, just dripping, this gentle acknowledgement, allowing, attending, being with. That bucket is very gradually going to fill. Uh, my husband is deep into dementia, yeah. I have a difficult time not sharing everything with him. It would be too confusing or worrying. Any pointers? If I'm going to spend Thanksgiving with our son in California, but have planned to not tell him thoughts. Oh my gosh, well, I have 30 seconds to answer this very, very difficult question. The first thing I can say is that that is just difficult. It's painful. I don't know if I can give you a logistical answer of what to do or what not to do, but I can say so many of my older friends in a caregiving role are having to make these decisions. And probably one thing that is very important is to have somebody else that you can tell these things to, somebody else that you can talk to about these difficulties. You could think about joining a caregiver's group where other people who are having similar uh, experiences, you can share with them and be supported. And even just as important, you can support them because you'll feel less isolated if you can be supported and if you can support others. And the mindfulness practice is very helpful in, in uh, identifying your needs addressing some of your needs, and then knowing the actions that you need to take in order to address the needs that mindfulness is, of course, not going to be able to. So doing something different, connecting to a wider community like you're doing right now, very, very important. So I know there are more comments here, but I am coming to the end of my time. It seems like, as always, this forgiveness practice brings up a lot for people. You know, a lot of warmth, a lot of goodness, also a lot of challenge, a lot of rich material. And so as you come out of this call, you might talk to somebody about what is happening for you. I love to journal. Maybe you're a journaler. If you're somebody who likes to journal, you could journal a little bit about this or just as you go through your day, allowing it to kind of move through, okay, forgiveness. How am I feeling about this? What am I thinking about this? Yes. So good to be with all of you here, Mindfulness Monday. It's always a pleasure. This is such a rich community. There are always such good conversations going on here. And so thank you very much for having me. And I look forward to seeing you again very, very soon. Take very good care. Thank you, Nico. Always appreciate you. And a big thank you to all of you who continue to show up. And for those of you who have just found us, we hope that you come back. Uh, please don't hesitate to reach out in your journey with Parkinson's. We have a comprehensive website and many more resources that address everything that's related to Parkinson's. That website's parkinson.org, or you can call our helpline at 1-800-4-PD-INFO or email us at helpline at parkinson.org. Until then, be well, my friends. We'll see you on September 30th.